All right then, so there was interesting developments in the courts uh, barely 24 hours ago, for some commercial banks at least. Uh, they might be all smiles. That's because the country's high court declared the Banking Amendment Act of 2016, effectively the rate cap law, as being unconstitutional. Now, the ruling basically challenged the section of the Banking Act that was introduced about three years ago now, which capped uh, interest rates at four percentage points above the central bank's benchmark rate. However, the court has delayed uh, its implementation of its ruling uh, for 12 months. Uh, it's basically saying, look, the existing commitments between banks and the clients and a whole lot of other complicated matters that we need to take into account and fix before this judgment can take effect. The Central Bank of Kenya is now expected to review the ruling before issuing a comprehensive statement later on. Right then, so where exactly does this leave you? George Bodo is a banking analyst, is covering institutions in East Africa and beyond. He joins me now in studio at the moment. Thanks for coming. Welcome. So what are your initial impressions of this? I think that uh, it's not a final decision. Um, it's, it's maybe it's a more legal discussion than financial. Mm -hmm. And I say legal for two reasons. One is that it's still open for a review, um, an appeal. There's still a window for an appeal. It's definitely not a done deal. It's not a done deal, in which case someone is likely go to the judge and, and seek a stay of execution of this, those orders. Mm. And the second issue is that um, I think I see a standoff between parliament and judiciary. Mm. And, and for lack of a better word, this be, these two institutions hate each other. Right. Um, and there's a precedence. I, I think previously parliament has failed to act on orders from the, co the, from the, the judiciary. But uh, just before we get to that bit, there was something interesting about the, the ruling where the judge basically argued that the petitioner had failed to demonstrate that the capping of rates was in some way an interference with monetary policy. Now, that goes against everything we know about economics. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what did you make of that? I think that um, if the rate cap as it is has emasculated monetary policy, that, that there's, no, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And into the mix, add a very aggressive fiscal position. Right. Um, In short, enormous deficits. That's yes. what he's talking about. <laughs> and, and actually, for me, my own view is that the fiscal side has, um, has actually taken away the effectiveness of rate curves. Because if you're talking about the government borrowing in local currency terms at about 30%, mm -hmm. I think for, for, for commercial banks, it's a no-brainer. So the fiscal side um, has also has a huge role and has to take part of the blame. Indeed. Um, so the court also struck down, and this, this really was my favorite part, um, sections 33, 1 and 2, and they argued that they were, in their words, vague, imprecise, ambiguous, indefinite. And that loops back to an argument I remember us having back in 2016, because the way the law was written, it wasn't clear exactly how they were defining what the rate cap was, because it could be CBR plus 400 basis points, yeah. or, again, mathematically, 4% of CBR loaded on top of CBR. And that sort of ambiguity just didn't help. No, I think the law says that it's 400 basis point above the base rate as set by the Central Bank of Kenya. And at the time, remember, there was also KBR, so it wasn't clear what the base rate was. Yeah, but remember, um, Central Bank is, sits at the base of, uh, of money. And it has, that means all rates of the Central Bank are base. Now, one of the leading base rate is the monetary policy rate. What is the monetary policy rate? Is the rate at which central bank lends it to, to banks. Mm -hmm. It's base rate. Mm -hmm. So in my view, if you, the, you could argue it in so many ways, but I think that, well, I argued a while back that they ought to have <laughs> set another, um, uh, another inst benchmark mm -hmm. for these for purposes of the implementation of this act. Mm -hmm. um, but when I look back, I still hold the same view that they should have set up another base rate. But why not, for argument's sake, because we're jumping into monetary policy now, why not just link it to 182 day T-bills? The rolling average of that over, say, six months. Well, 182 day T-bills is not a base rate. But it is a rate at which, it's a more effective rate at which people it's, it's borrow baked money. With, well, it's baked with certain market aspects. So you could say that it's also baked with some premium. Well, yeah, pretty much. It's but it's a more accurate reflection of what money actually costs, doesn't it? Well, remember that the central bank's base rates are basically signal rates. They're not the actual rates at which the market actually transacts. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the, most of the base rates are signal. In actual sense, if, a cent, if any commercial bank is distressed and goes over the window, they will be lent at the CBR. Mm -hmm. That's the base rate. So well, I'm just trying to dispute the fact that 
a T-bill rate could actually be used. Mm -hmm. No, it's not because a T-bill is built with certain uh, market market risk premiums. Yeah. Right. So ultimately, though, as you pointed out, this, this doesn't solve the underlying problem because private sector credit growth 2018 was around 3 point something percent, which was absolutely... It was about 5 percent, average 5 percent. Well, yeah, give or take. Well, 2017 uh, was 3 percent, so you could say there's an improvement. It's still dismal. I mean, we've yeah. been, what, 20 percent for the better part of before... Yeah, we were 20 percent, actually. Yeah, so which is way, way higher. Yeah. But at the same time, the position that legislators hold hasn't changed. And the position that Treasury and the Central Bank hold hasn't changed either. So within this 12-month window that the court has provided, can we actually solve this thing? Because these two sides are in two different galaxies. I think, based on the precedent, I think I'm seeing the two, actually there are three sides to it. You have the judiciary now, you have the parliament, you have the policy makers, this is the fiscal and monetary policy makers. Mm -hmm. So now you have a tripartite situation. I think I'm going to see, I'm still seeing a standoff. Mm -hmm. Parliament are going to say, you're not budging. It's, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, and, and the two policy makers are going to hold a position. Actually, but I have to caution the policy makers because um, it's, when the news came out yesterday, the central bank seemed to take a victory lap, you know, even the way they, they were very aggressive in their tweets. I think they have to be careful mm. in the way they handle this. But they should not be seen as, as lobbying on behalf of banks. But, I, but, but I mean, it, it, what's the difference? It's a very thin line, though, between being seen as lobbying on behalf of banks and, and doing your job, essentially advocating for proper economic policies, which is what CBK is Th doing. That's my life. point. My point is that they need to say that as, as a fiscal advisor to the mm -hmm. government, they, they play a very big role. They're, they're the fiscal and economic advice of the government, they're the fiscal agent. Mm -hmm. They need to say, it, they need to actually advise government that your po fiscal position is too aggressive. Actually, in the current scenario, if you haven't noticed, uh, we're, in a, we're in a fiscal domination period where basically all monetary policy actions have to take into account the debt position. Mm -hmm. So they are also held hostage. I think they need to say, look, if you want this thing to work, you need to tone down on your fiscal side, on the fiscal aggression. Mm -hmm. And this would, I think they, that's, that's a more position they need to take. That's also and also something that legislators they need to actually, actually say that, really, could you push this SME um, guarantee scheme, you know, push it forward, escalate it. I think those are the kind of policy um, items they need to be talking about. All right, we'll leave it there for the time being. George Bodo, banking analyst. Thanks. Thank you Thank very you. much.